Hello, Macy here. This is Dragonfly, Spirit Wolf's new ion drive fighter. Um, I've been testing it extensively. This is the Mark 12. This is a Shrike class ship, and I'll tell you why I call them Shrike classes in a minute. But this particular ship is very interesting because it can get to another planet on a single stage. This happened quite by accident as I was testing weapon loadouts, thanks to Ham and Eggs Airborne for your bomb idea. Um, I tried missiles on this ship, but it's such an unstable firing platform that I had to abandon it. Whereas bombs, as a light bomber, it's quite effective. Um, I imagine it being able to drop in from orbit, bomb a target, and then escape back to orbit. That was my thinking. Um, I will actually have to drop these bombs before I do this flight test because they are quite heavy. So I'll just get rid of them before I take off. And then we'll see if we can get into orbit. So there they go, bombs released. Nice little pop. I won't show you any of the weapons tests because they're still in development at the moment. Nothing's working exactly how I want it to yet. So, Shrike class. A Shrike class, to me, is a ship that can get into orbit without the use of regular atomic or liquid fuel burning engines. Only jet engines. So they're designed to reach ridiculously high speeds at very high altitudes. I've made Shrike class ships before if you look at my hypersonic jets video. But I've mostly failed in this. But the answer is to put very many um, air intakes on the front of it. You may have seen a few other YouTube videos and it is quite common on the forum as a solution to this problem. So I've tried to make it look aesthetically pleasing as well as having um, 12 air intakes on it. But look at the speeds I can achieve at these altitudes. I'm just building my speed now as much as I can, just hovering on the edge of the atmosphere where it's most thinnest. And you can see I'm burning out all the time on this jet engine, but just reigniting it. The advantage of having a single jet engine is it won't spin you out. There's only one that can backfire. So when it does backfire you can just reignite it but you can see there you go I now have orbital velocities although I'm still in the atmosphere I've reached orbital velocity so if I powered down now I would just decay instantly and hit the ground again so it's about keeping these speeds this fast and somehow making the translation between upper atmosphere and orbit that's the hard bit and that's where the ion drives come in now usually if you extend these sails in atmosphere they'll just rip straight off but at these very thin tenuous layers you can get away with it although it will create a little bit more drag but now iron engines on full power so six of these large solar arrays will actually supply full power to six iron engines so it's just about generating enough thrust to just keep me out of this atmosphere and I'm just pushing that up very slowly you can see I've left this jet engine burning so I'm just leaking excess fuel into space because I really do not need this extra weight but I will leave just a little bit in so I can land at this point I'm intending to fly out to the moon maybe circle the moon and come back and land that was my original plan so just a little bit left in there this is why I took off just before dawn because I need the sun above me for this entire part of the orbit so by the time I go into the night side I can still stay afloat without any thrust and it's just about pulling it off so I can tuck these away now I don't need to but I really do like the way they fold in and out like that so I'm just folding them away to go through the dark phase of the orbit and um when I get to the light side again I can open them up and continue this burn and all I need to do now is to get the other side of the orbit out of the atmosphere and then we're free but the hard bit's done so dawn on the far side of the planet reopen the arrays now once I get this up into a circular orbit I want to then try and extend the orbit at this point like I said I want to get out to the moon so it's about going all the way around the orbit and burning at that same point again but as you can see I've got the far side of the orbit out of atmosphere so I'm now in a proper orbit which I could be here indefinitely so that was the first part of this test complete it can actually get into orbit it is an SSTO so I'm only burning at that one point 
and then I go around and continue to burn at that point and see how far I can push this orbit out. But it's about now I'm beginning to think, well, maybe I can get to another planet, just maybe, maybe Eve. So I've just dropped the remainder of my fuel. I've got to this point so efficiently, well, comparatively so compared to some of my other ion driven craft that I thought, go on, I'll give it a go. Let's see what it's going to require to get to Eve. So I'm just trying to get a prediction here. Um, I'm leaving in retrograde and I just want to see how long this is going to suggest it's going to take. And if you look, it's giving me a reading of 417 meters per second, which is doable, which is doable. So off we go. Let's try and get to Eve. For now, I'm just warping around every time and only burning. I say burning, but only mildly pushing should be the more appropriate term at that point. And so eventually, I do actually reach escape velocity. For the first time, I've managed to reach escape velocity with an SSTO um, well, ship of any type, really. I find this incredibly hard to do. So this little light ship has managed it for the first time for me. And without the need of huge amounts of fuel and engineering and so on. So, yeah, an oversight, I think. A single can of jet fuel and a little clutch of iron engines is all you need. So let's leave Kerbin behind us and swim out into the Great Black and um, see if we can actually get capture with Eve, which is going to be a little bit of chance, I think. I'm going to have to get lucky because I didn't actually plan where Eve was in its orbit. Um, so I finished my burn and now I'm selecting Eve as a target and we'll see if we can get some sort of capture. It's not going to happen the first time round, but if I place a maneuver node at this ascending node on the far side here and just fix my inclination a bit so it more matches Eve. Um, because Eve is, is slightly eccentric, it's slightly off the ecliptic, which is going to cost a little bit more fuel, but I think we've got it. So time to open up the sails one more time and uh, do this little correction. I know I said I'd never use ion engines again, I did say that, and I did genuinely think that. It takes so long to do anything. This has taken a couple of hours of flight to get me up here. It is quite mind-numbing, but I think it was worth it for this occasion, just as an experiment. I'm never going to be able to get back, but that's not the point. This is just a test. So I just got that capture there by putting another maneuver node in once I'd fixed the inclination and just um, tweaked it for capture. And then I've tweaked it once or twice more on the way in until I'm just brushing Eve here. But it needs one more tweak to just get me really close. So I'm just slowing my approach ever so slightly here. I'm not going to try and make all, but I'm just going to try and land because, like I said, this is a test. So here we are, arrival at Eve. We've made it across the big black in a single stage ship. So a success so far. Let's get these sails in before they rip off and try and land. I've got a little parachute on the front of this and some um, legs which I've been experimenting landing on Kerbin with. It's relatively effective. I've used nose parachutes and um, vertical landing before. It's just quite an easy cost efficient or should I say weight efficient way of solving that. So I'm just in orbit here. You can see my probe from New Horizons landed just there. So looks like we're going to land not far from it actually. Welcome back to Eve. I haven't yet given up on my carrier that I'm making for Isprit, but I couldn't resist trying this type of ship because obviously making a fighter that is an SSTO does mean a carrier isn't necessary. And I would very much like it that a carrier isn't necessary because it's a real pain to build. But I'm still working on it. So I'm just diving towards the nearest landmass here in this incredibly thick choking atmosphere. She doesn't like to fly very well in this sort of environment but there's the parachute deployed. I can't actually get my nose up because I haven't got enough movement over my control surfaces to actually lift my nose up so I'm just spiralling round so when this parachute does deploy it doesn't tear me in half. It should deploy very soon. I'm just trying to keep my nose up, spiralling, slowly losing altitude and there you go. It's all still intact have to be careful at that point because it can rip the engines off and so on with the G of um, 
the parachute opening, but we're okay. Just steadying that up, stop me spinning. Let's put the landing legs down and land on Eve, all the way from Kerbin. I'll put the craft file in the description so you can have some fun with it. Remember to drop the bombs before you go anywhere because um, you won't get very far with them and empty all the fuel. Almost landing here. It's almost impossible to land badly on Eve because of this thick atmosphere. So a gentle touchdown. And we are on Eve. Mission complete. Well, it wasn't really the mission. It was more of an accident. But it's nice to show that it is capable of doing this. And maybe in the future I can um, tweak it a little bit so we can get a return flight. Not from Eve, but possibly from Duna. If you're interested in what I do with this ship, make sure you subscribe. And if you've liked what you've seen here, please give me a like because it's gold dust to me and very much appreciated. And look out for my next video where I'll be giving you a tutorial on how to make missiles. So, bye for now.